But if you're looking at the non-fossil resources and look at the aggregate scale, most of those don't break the one terawatt barrier globally. Global primary energy consumption is on the order of 20 terawatts. So in our view, you need to be going for these resources that can achieve tens of terawatts. Hmm. That Those resources have the potential to displace large fractions of fossil fuel use. And the oceans have many tens of terawatts of potential hmm. between the wind waves. So that really excited us. There's this resource that is totally untapped very low cost potential, very large scale potential. So let's talk about actually harnessing that resource. How does the machine work? This is the whole trick. Lots of stuff that has been done in ocean energy has been complex mechanical machines. And we said we have to reduce this problem to something simpler. And what we eventually got to was that you need a system with no moving parts at all, except maybe one water turbine, like a hydroelectric dam. We call it a node. It's a system that has a top that is basically a sphere, and it has a tube that goes down into the water column. It's got a constriction in the tube, and just the shape of that system as it moves up and down because of the waves causes water to be forced up into the reservoir. Mm -hmm. And then from the reservoir, it goes through the turbine and returns back to the tube. So you've got an almost closed loop in which this water is just moving all the time, spinning that turbine all the time, and you get all of the properties of hydroelectric in terms of the economics, the reliability, and very low cost. Getting back to how it works, it's sort of effectively using the motion of the waves to create a pump, right? Correct, so yeah. It basically is bobbing up and down passively using no energy Correct. in the waves. And as it happens, the shape basically pumps water into the top. Then water then leaves through a turbine. The turbine just spins very much like a hydroelectric dam, and that creates energy, it creates electricity. Exactly. Right? What do you do with the power? The best use of this power at sea fuels and compute. If you're making fuels, you're already on the best way to move mass around the world. All the fuels in the world are already delivered on big ships. So if you can just get your head around the fact that now we're making the fuels at sea using this new technology, you're tapping into a global supply chain that is already optimized for moving fuels and it's a much more scalable way to deliver energy. Compute takes advantage of the fact that now you're in the world's best heat sink. We can have our compute payloads right there on the node, so that eliminates huge parts of the cost stack associated with doing computing. It's really the best possible way that you can imagine doing computing for the kinds of computing workloads that work at sea over a satellite connection. So can you talk a little bit about like how this scales? If you can make a single manufacturing plant that's building the same thing over and over, that gets you those mass production economies of scale. And then to that, the structure is so darn simple. For basically a billion dollars, you can go and build a factory that spits out a gigawatt capacity of nodes every single year. You're mass producing these units from a single coastal facility. It's like an iPhone factory. You're just kicking these things out. We didn't know at the beginning if the costs were achievable. It was all a hunch based on the power density of that resource. But as we've gone on, we've proven that yes, you can make these machines for down around $1,500 a kilowatt. And that's, that's all you need to be getting those fossil fuel level costs of fuel production and very low cost for compute.